of this Friday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Nick Casario stands pat, does not move up into the first round. So we'll talk about that. Best available players entering day two and the entire outlook of the AFC South now. You are Locked On Texans, your daily podcast on the Houston Texans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers to this Friday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you to all of our first-time watchers and listeners out there in Texans world. If this is your first time, please subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, thank you to all of our return listeners coming back to continue support, listen, and watch us on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy Hickman on the other side of the screen, one of the hardest working men in this sports business, covering your Houston Texans, Sports Illustrator's own, our credential media member, Cody Davis. On today's show, we'll look at the entire outlook of the AFC South now that day one of the NFL draft has conceded. We also look at the best available players entering day two, and we open up today's show looking at the Houston Texans staying at pick 42. It was wildly rumored throughout the first day of the draft, leading up to the draft, during the draft, Mm. that Nick Casario uh, would potentially move up. But today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to get your job posted for free terms and conditions apply. I think day one of the NFL draft this year was a shocker for a lot of people. We saw six quarterbacks go within the first 15 picks. Uh, Very shocked. Michael Penix to Atlanta, Hmm. uh, Bo Nix to Denver. And so we, with those, you know, Quarterbacks taking Cody and listeners, we saw a lot of great talent pushed down the board. Mm-hmm. And with that talent being pushed down the board, I think once it got to around 20 to 25, we saw a lot of available options that will be, that will be potentially available in day two. It makes sense for Houston to stay at 42. You mentioned the six quarterbacks, but out of the 32 players taken in the first round, 23 came on the offensive side of the ball. And, John, I'm with you. You know, I think going into this draft, when you was taking a look at the projections, taking a look at, you know, which team can actually go after a corner, go after a defensive tackle, um, go after a linebacker, you know, there was quite a bit of teams you could be like, okay, I could see them going after uh, Kool-Aid. I could see them going after Adrian Cooper. But (laughs) once again, 23 offensive players taken in the first round. That's crazy. And, John, I'm with you. I think once it got to a certain point, Nick Castillo and Costa Mico Ryans probably looked at the, looked at each other in the war room and said to themselves, you know what, um, it's going to be in our best interest to make sure we save all of these picks for moves that we can make in day two, moves that we can make in day three, and definitely have an opportunity to get a lot of the players that's on the draft board. Because remember, John, the one thing you and I have been talking about a lot ever since the start of the all season. The 2024 draft was going to be a defensive draft for the Houston Texans. And just take a look at all of the players that we have highlighted on this show. Kool-Aid, um, you know, uh, Edrin Cooper, um, T. Sweat. Like, we have named and highlighted so many prospects from the second to the seventh round. And I think the only prospect taken that we highlighted over these last couple of months was Byron Murphy, and that says a lot. Once again, I remember at the NFL Combine, Nick Casario told us that one of his top priorities was to make sure that he go out there and try to get a cornerback to start opposite of Derry Singley Jr. You guys already know the story. Coach D'Amico Ryan said that regardless of what we did through our free agency, that's not going to change our plans in the draft. Though John and myself have been told that the Texans were always high on Kool-Aid McKinstry. I was there in Indianapolis doing his media availability when asked, have you met with the Houston Texans? Yes, it was a long and lengthy meeting. 
10 picks into day two, there's a great chance that the Houston Texans can still get a guy at the top or near the top of their draft board. I think yesterday, even though the Texans did not have a first round pick, I think yesterday played out in the best case scenario for this franchise. Oh, man, facts. And with that being said, one of the things that I always wanted to highlight is if there was a player that was available for Houston that they really liked and really have high on their board from picks 31 to 40, that's what we would probably see Houston trade up. I remember you saying that. A lot of people got carried away with the idea of Houston trading back into the 20s. I think that would have been redundant, also considering that they traded their 20th overall pick. So, <clears throat> and I think once you get into the 20s, once you want to trade – into the 20s when you don't have a first round to swap with, you start looking at mortgage in a lot, right, for the future. Mm -hmm. and Houston wants to do that as much as maybe they probably would have in the past because right now this team is built for the future. and You don't necessarily have to give up a lot to go get a, a huge insurance policy as a, for a player for your future when you already kind of got a solid team like they do right now. So for me, it was always – between 31, 30 if you want to throw 30 in there, but mm -hmm. 30 to 40 was where we would see Houston dabble with the idea of trading up. And I would say this. I wouldn't count them out now for trading up in the second round, maybe between now picks 34 and 38 if there's a player, Kool-Aid, Cooper, uh, Buller, right? Uh, Newton is a player that I think would make sense for Houston uh, for that mm. defense. Position he slipped down to the second round, which was kind of shocking. Also, T Sweat. I look at T Sweat now. If these defensive players were falling like that, and again, I think defensive players will start now falling off the board. But where is he ranked on a lot of teams' draft board with the issues that he had over the past month? Right? Where is he? Can Houston get him later in the draft? I'm about to say, do you? Think maybe he's gonna be there at 86 because even with his issues, I don't think he's gonna move past 86. But John, to your point, I still think he's a top 100 player, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Do you think the Texans get him at 86 or trade up somewhere near higher 80s or lower 70s to go out and get his services? I can see that uh scenario again. I've said it from day one, Cody. You said it. We can see Houston trading up at least twice in this draft, but to your point that you just made. You look at a lot of teams in the 32 teams in the NFL, of the 32 teams in the NFL, excuse me. Uh, because Houston has such a great offseason, this draft, as of right now, I think they came out on top over teams like Atlanta, over teams <laughs> like uh, Denver, like Minnesota, Denver, right? I, I think that because a lot of these teams had to reach – and again, Atlanta and Buffalo, who just gifted the Texans, <laughs> Stephon Diggs. That was crazy what they gifted did. Golly, the they could have used him. Right. Gifted the world champions, Xavier Worthy. So you see some of these teams that made their decisions in day one. Some teams reached. Some teams, uh, uh, like the Bills, just made terrible decisions. You look at the Houston Texans, and without them having a draft pick, I think had a better day one than some of those teams because they did not have to reach for any players because of how the draft went. Now, if we would have saw more defensive players taken early on, mm -hmm. then maybe we see Houston trade up 30, 31, and 32. But because a lot of those great players coming from colleges, uh, coming from the college uh, level, sliding down, now you'll see Houston say, you know what, day two, we can either stand put at 42 or if there's a guy that's available at 37 that we like and those teams talk and we may hear another team is interested in them, we can trade up and not have to give so much away. And I think for Houston, that's a win. Listen, guys, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to make sure that you have the qualified and quality professionals that are right for the role that you're looking for. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hiring professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats 
and may not have the time to go out there and resource for hire. That's why LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process even easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making the process quicker and again, easier on small businesses. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This episode of your favorite locked on podcast is brought to you by the best meal kit service in the game, Home Chef. No more having to answer the dreaded question, what are we going to do for dinner tonight? Thanks to Home Chef and their chef design recipes that are delivered directly to my door, all pre-packaged, pre-portioned. They even peel the garlic cloves for you. And each recipe, one of my favorites, black and mahi mahi, comes with a full page of easy to read instructions that include customization options and pictures to guide you along the way through the step-by-step process. So you don't have to ask, is that what Charles? looks like i cannot recommend home chef enough especially right now because for a limited time home chef is giving locked on listeners 18 free meals free dessert for life and of course free shipping on your first box if you head to homechef.com slash locked on today that's homechef.com slash locked on for 18 free meals and free dessert for life yes you heard that right homechef.com slash locked on must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. So with the amount of players that fell in the mm-hmm. first round, right, Cole, you said 23 offensive players were taken. Mm-hmm. So that means the second round, Nick Casario and D'Amico Ryans will be licking their chops with the amount of good defensive players that will be available. And of that group, before I pass it off to you, Remember this, the guys that Houston really liked, Cooper, Bullard, Kool-Aid, which I can't wait to see his jersey sales. And you got the candy red with the Kool-Aid. and you know, <laughs> the Kool-Aid is available. Newton is available. You got guys that's available that Houston really likes and need at positions that will be there for the taking. So entering day two, who's the best available for Houston? I'm going to throw a name that we didn't really look at too much, but he did start catching my attention towards the end of this draft process, and that's defensive tackle Jerzon Newton um, from Illinois because this guy literally possesses all the attributes that Coach D'Amico Ryans wants in his defensive tackle. He wants to use in order to improve the interior defensive line. He is really good. As a run stopper, he's able to get after the quarterback. I believe his last year at Illinois, he finished with like seven and a half to eight sacks. And not only that, he also registered like I want to say about 30 hurries. And to go back to what Coach D'Amico Ryan's always said about the importance, he said everything for the Houston Texans, regardless of the skill positions, everything for the Houston Texans on both sides of the ball starts up front. And we already know that he's already used this opportunity throughout the offseason to take care of the edge. You do have some quality um, defensive linemen that you can utilize in hopes of improving the interior, i.e. keeping Khalil Davis around, my guy. But at the same time, I think Coach D'Amico Ryan is still seeking, still searching for that defensive tackle that he can trust and, and basically start regardless of who the opponent is. And the one thing that I know about Newton is the fact that this young man may not be, you know, the ideal, might not have the ideal physique of a defensive tackle. I mean, he's 6'1", 6'2", about 280, 290, but Coach D'Amico Ryan say for him, it's not about the size. It's all about can a defensive tackle um, attack, and that's exactly what Newton has been able to do at Illinois. John, I, I put it like this. I think, let's say within the first nine picks if like we are thinking it's going to be defensive heavy if Kool-Aid and Ezra and Cooper if they're off the board by the time the Houston Texans uh, pick at 42 which I mean <laughs> that could change at any moment as of right now Um, I think that is definitely a guy that the Houston Texans could target and possibly one of the best prospects that they could come away with in day two yeah man I think again day two has a lot of players in that pool for Houston Newton, Kool-Aid, 
Uh, you look at Cooper, who's who will be available uh, for day two, man. You look at Houston having two picks, mm-hmm. 42 and 59. And I think we'll see Houston potentially stay in pad at 42 and trade up from 59. There's two guys that I think would do well for Houston. Number one, Cody. Well, three guys, actually. Newton is one of those players. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that Newton will be off the board by 42. I think Houston really does like Kool-Aid. And so I could see Kool-Aid falling to 42. And I could also see Houston trading up from 59 to go get Edrian Cooper. But I, I think when I look at the players that are best available, that it's for Houston, right? If we're talking about mm-hmm. Buffalo, we're talking about San Fran, if we're talking about other teams, that's different. But I don't see, and I could be wrong, but I don't see Houston not selecting at least one of the two players that has not only been linked to Houston, but they've had conversations. They've had those meetings. And that screams Kool-Aid, Cooper, even Javon Bullard. You know, I wonder where he'll rank in between 42 and 59 as well. So Mm -hmm. Newton is a player. uh, Cooper is a player. Bullard is a player. Kool-Aid is a player. Also, Kamari Lasseter is a player that I think for Houston, depending on what they do with 42, because they could potentially trade up at 42, Mm -hmm. and I think Lasseter would be available at 59. Uh, But again, do you miss out on Cooper? Is there another linebacker that you like that you can draft at 86? How you you know attack that because I think it you know between the first three picks it should be safety cornerback and linebacker in whatever variation, but it it'll get tricky for Houston. I I just think I mean because if we look at the players that's available in totality, you know Brandon Fisk that's a D tackle that's a, that'll be available mm-hmm. uh, out of out of Florida State. T.J. Tampa that's a cornerback that'll be available. Junior Colson linebacker out of Michigan. Mason Smith, uh, D tackle out of LSU. Cedric Gray, linebacker out of North Carolina. Tyler Newbert, uh, safety out of Minnesota. Max Milton, cornerback out of Rutgers, who's a guy I really do like, uh, quite as kept. So the, the players are there, but I don't want to get too caught up in available players mm-hmm. and not focus on available players that Houston has talked to and has had meetings with and that those players have been linked with the franchise. That being said, Cooper, Bullet, Kool-Aid, Lassiter, Newton are the players that I think for Houston, they will either be there at 52 or 59, or we'll see them trade up to go get one of those five players. We've all been there either as a player or a fan. It's halftime. The scoreboard is not looking too good. You're feeling low. You're not sure. You or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, you lift your head and say to yourself, it's time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heist and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. Smash hit mobile game. Monopoly go. Unless you compete with your friends to get the most richest and the biggest empire. It's a monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime with tons of new heist twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much you can do. Play on countless dynamic monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can either work, even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Before we close out today's show, we do want to look at the outlook of the AFC South as of right I now. I tried to tell you a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> As of right now, uh, through the first round, and then, of course, we, we we will revisit this after the draft with the Jags, Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU, the Colts, um, Laotu, Latu, if I mispronounce his name, please forgive me. He'll be for the Colts, uh, edge rusher. 
J.C. Latham for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, my quick thoughts are I think each team did a very good job of drafting a player at a position that can help them uh, get a notch over the Houston Texans. Brian Thomas, you look at the DB room that Houston has right now and will potentially have after the draft. Derek Stingley rise, is rising as a number one cornerback. You go out there and get a weapon, and good for them of getting a weapon for Trevor Lawrence, who desperately needs it. So that adds to that wide receiver room. That's two um, weapons. Remember, they signed Gabe Davis in free agency. Yeah, Gabe Davis is a bona fide, I think, wide receiver 3 2. I think Brian Thomas can potentially be a wide receiver one for Trevor Lawrence, and he needs that. Um, I don't think that he's had a, a true wide receiver one. one. I think Christian Kirk is a very good wide receiver, too. So that's good for them. Lat two for the Colts, Edge Rusher. Uh, you look at his productivity uh, at UCLA and his career altogether. Uh, that helps out the Colts in a, in, in, in a major way. J.C. Latham, tackle for the Titans. Again, Daniel Hunter, hmm. uh, Will Anderson. You know, they're going to need that protection. But overall, they did a very good job of making sure that they got protection for their new franchise quarterback and Will Levis. Um, I, I like the picks for each team, honestly. I really like the Jags pick because they traded back and got the, Brian Thomas. With the Texans' original pick. Yeah. That's what hurt me. It's yeah. not the fact that they trade. It's the fact that they use the Texans' <laughs> original Pick. I was like, come on, y'all. Y'all should have stayed at 23. But, John, you know, the one thing about the AFC South, man, I'm going to be very intrigued to see how this season play out because it seems like every move that 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 the Colts, the Jazz, and the Titans have made, it's kind of like a counter as to how can they slow down and compete with the Houston Texans. And um, But, look, I'm not about to get caught up in the notion right now because the one thing Jacksonville proved to me last year not only do you have to play a game, but you also got to finish the season in some respectable way. Because then they end up losing, what was it, like six of their last five or five of their last six or something like that? Yep, made um, way for Houston to get into the playoffs. When the, when the exactly. Division. So, but, I mean, even though they are a divisional rival, man, you got to respect the hell out of the Jazz or how they, where they went after this offseason. And. Once again, man, knowing that they got, you know, one of the top wide receivers, in my opinion, coming into this draft and Thomas from LSU um, with their own pick, dog, their own original pick. It hurt, man. It hurt. But, you yeah. know, that's another reason why I look at today's draft and say to myself, there is no way in hell the Houston Texans are going to leave day two of this draft without addressing that safety unit because once again this was a team that finished the 2023 season as great as that defense was they finished towards the bottom half of the league in passing defense and coach D'Amico Ryan's always said the reason why he's focusing on defense is because they got to play against some very good quarterbacks in the AFC alone to get to where they need to be and they got to do something with that with that with that secondary for real shout out to the AFC South though and shout out to our locked on AFC South podcast, Jags, Colts, Titans, because uh, I like all three of these draft moves. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a competitive division, no doubt about it. And a lot of people are sleeping on Tennessee. Don't sleep on Tennessee. Um, and I'm sleeping we'll, on Tennessee. I got it. I'm, I'm sound asleep. Like, I'm snoring. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> like, the Colts and Jazz got my attention. But Tennessee, I, I guess it's because – I'm still not a big believer in Will Levis. Maybe that's what it is. Um, I'm not mad at that. I did see some things out of Will Levis last year, and I like how they built around really Hopkins. They already got Trey Lon Burks out there. Yeah, it's true, but I, I got to see more. You know, it's kind of like the Josh Allen thing, right? Mm -hmm. put, him, put the weapons around him, tailor the offense around what he does well, and then, hey, let's see what he does. So I think that that's why sense. I like Tennessee. And I don't think Will Levis is as bad, at least as of right now, as I thought he was coming into the NFL. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll be a very competitive division. But, you know, we didn't get a chance to, to really talk draft prospects because we're still waiting. <laughs> so the next time you guys hear from us, there will potentially be two new Houston Texans 
on this roster. Cody, really quick, if you would have to guess, who would those Texan players be, those new players be? I'm going to go, of course, Kool-Aid. He's at the top of my draft board as of right now. And I don't even know. Probably Tyler, Tyler New, 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 Newen? Newbin. New, Newbin, the safety. Because I, I, they they got to do something with the safety unit. <laughs> safety is, is, is one of those positions I'm getting to. Like, can you get them at 86? Is there a D tackle that you believe will be available in the 100s? Uh, I like Kitchens uh, above every safety, single high safety in this draft. Oh, man, it's going to be interesting. Put it like this. If they walk away day two, well, let's say – Corner in the safety, just know on tomorrow's show, I'll be happy as hell. I agree. <laughs> Thank y'all for listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Again, tomorrow we will be able to talk about the players that were drafted. Hmm. And we'll have a Saturday show, right? Yes, sir. We'll have a Saturday show, so make sure y'all tune in. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Locked On Texans. Subscribe, like, and comment on the YouTube page. Also, give me a follow on Twitter at John underscore Hickey 12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody, C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I guess now we can officially say happy draft day. Peace.